In this machine learning class, we will see the decision tree algorithm from third unit supervised learning classification. Right? In today's class, we will see the definition of decision tree, building a decision tree, and let us see one simple example how the decision tree will uh, make decisions. Okay, and avoiding overfitting after the strength and weakness and applications of decision tree. So all those things we will see one by one. Decision tree learning is one of the most popular classification algorithm and the model builds in the form of tree-like structure. See this like structure. Okay, decision tree will be created, this such uh, structure and it supports the multidimensional analysis with multiple classes. If we have more than one classes for an attribute, then this is called as multidimensional analysis. Okay, and it is characterized by fast execution time. That is, the execution time is very less and easy in interpretation of rules. Okay, implementing rules are very easy here. And the goal of decision tree is to create a model which is based on past data, that is, past vector. Okay, that is used to predict the past data is used to predict the value of the output variable the value of the output variable based on the input variable in the future vector okay so it is used to predict the value of output variable based on the input variable the decision tree consists of three types of nodes root node branch node and link node Okay, in this diagram, this is root node. A is root node because this is the starting node. And uh, the B represent the branch node. And F and T are representing the leaf node. Leaf node. Okay. So, uh, the internal node test the attribute. These are internal nodes. That is A and B. Root node and branch nodes are represented as internal nodes. So, based on the attribute value, the corresponding branch will be taken place. Okay, so this is node and these are edges. These are edges. Okay, so each branch correspond to the attribute value of true or false. Okay, here we are having true or false. Uh, sometimes if it is a mark, mark means this is low, this is average, this is high. Okay, three different branch may be there. So, based on the attribute value, the number of branches will be determined. Okay, here, the output variable is determined by the path, path of the tree from root node to leaf node. Okay, based on the attribute value. If the attribute A value is false, then this branch will be taken place. If the attribute value of B is false, then, sorry, B is true, then this particular branch will be taken place. Okay, based on the attribute value, the corresponding path will be determined. Okay. And next, let us see the decision tree building. That is building a decision tree. And this will be based on the training data. So, based on the training data only, we can build the decision tree by implementing recursive partitioning. Partitioning means the training data will be partitioned into multiple subsets based on the future value. The future value is nothing but in the table, we are having many attributes, many attributes. We have to take any of the attribute, okay, based on the values of those attributes, the branches will be defined, right. So, here, first, we need to select the root node, okay. Selecting root node is not a simple task. So, here, we need to select one future from the training data set which predict the target class in a strong way, which predict the target class in a strong way. Accordingly, we need to select the root node. Okay. The decision tree splits the data set into multiple partitions based on the class value of selected feature. For example, uh, in this node, the A is the root node and it is having two class values, true and false. So, the branches are 2. Suppose if we are having mark, mark as our um, attribute, uh, here three different classes are there. For example, low, average and high. Then we need to split three different branches. 
okay based on the value of this mark the corresponding branch will be taken place right like the root node the algorithm continues to split the nodes on the basis of future which help the best partitioning okay see once we defined the root node next we need to select the next future for further partitioning okay here also we need to select next future for further partitioning likewise this algorithm will continues until it reach the stopping criteria so here uh, three stopping criteria is there the first one is all or most of the examples of particular node have same classes okay that means maximum uh, branches are having same class value same class value means it is either true or false right so then we can stop our uh, generation of decision tree and second one is all the futures have been used up in the partitioning for example in our uh, data set we are having four futures all the four futures are used for partitioning then we can stop the generation and the third one is the tree has grown to a predefined threshold limit so if it reaches this threshold limit then we can stop the tree generation this is the example for uh, decision taken uh, let us see the car driving example okay normally the car will keep driving forward and the keep going or stop based on the various situation okay so while keep forwarding we need to check is there any stopping light ahead okay if it is yes then we need to check whether the stopping light is red or not okay traffic signal light is red or not if it is red yes then we need to stop the car and we need to wait until the red light turn to green okay if it is not red light then keep going forward okay while going we need to check is enough gas is available in the car okay gas or petrol whatever it may be if it is yes then we have to keep forward going forward otherwise we have to find the petrol bunk to fill the gas or petrol and then we have to go forward okay this is how decisions will be taken place the decision tree algorithm the input of the algorithm is training data set which is given in the problem itself and test data set or otherwise a data point a single data point so these are the input to the decision tree and the first step is do for all attributes so in the training data set we are having the attributes okay this is attribute 1 that is feature 1 feature 2 3 and 4 okay so these are otherwise called as attributes or features and calculate the entropy of the attribute f okay for example f1 fi right if ei less than e minimum e means entropy okay if entropy i less than entropy minimum then this minimum value uh, is assigned to ei okay ei value will be assigned to e minimum value and f5 will be f minimum f means future value right end if end do that is the same thing will be repeated for all the attributes after that we need to split the data set into subsets by using the attribute f minimum that is the f min f min will be the root node initially after that the same f min will uh, taken place the next level node okay by using that we need to draw the decision tree node which containing the attribute f minimum and split the data set into subsets okay and the next we need to repeat the same procedure until the full tree is drawn which covering all the attributes of the original table that is the training data set data set okay next let us see the overfitting problem in decision tree if we apply the decision tree algorithm continuously until the stopping criterion then the overfitting problem will occur that means the tree will grow uh, continuously that is indefinite growth will happen right and this problem is called as overfitting problem 
okay to avoid this overfitting problem we need to prune the decision tree in, in between whenever it is required right so it reduces that is the pruning reduces the size of the decision tree and the model will be more generalized and it can satisfy that is the classifying unknown and unlabeled data in the better way right so these are some of the advantages if we implement the pruning concept in the decision tree okay so the pruning will avoid the overfitting problem in decision tree there are uh, two approaches in pruning first one is pre pruning and the second one is post pruning when come to pre pruning the tree is stopped from further growing okay once it reach the certain number of decision nodes or decisions okay the tree will not get completely grown but once certain node got reach uh, that is decision got reach it will not grow further that is called as pre pruning okay in this strategy the algorithm avoids overfitting overfitting and optimized computational cost okay the computational cost cost will get reduced very much reduced but there is a chance of ignoring important information sometimes it may be possible here this is the drawback of pre pruning okay the advantage of pre pruning is the computational cost will get very much reduced and we are overcoming the overfitting problem and the drawback is sometimes we can ignore the important information in the further uh, part of decision tree right so this is pre pruning when come to post pruning we just allow the tree to grow entirely that is completely and then we post prune some of the branches from it okay so that the this drawback of pre pruning will get overcome that is we never miss the important information from here next we will move to strength and weakness of decision tree the first one is strength okay it provides a very simple and understandable rules okay decision tree rules are very simple and for smaller trees there is no requirement of mathematical or computational knowledge right and it works well for almost all the problems that is most of the machine learning problems we can use this decision tree and it can handle both numerical data as well as categorical data right and it also suitable for small or large training data set and the decision tree provides a definite clue for the future uh, which are more useful for classifications in the training data set we can select the future which will be more useful for classification right so these are the important strength of decision tree and next let us see the weakness of decision tree here the decision tree models are uh, uh, affected by the futures having more number of possible values that means let us take the rating of particular item okay rate rate is our example so if the rate is only 3 that is low rate average rate high rate okay if it is only 3 then it is very easy for us uh, for classifying the data suppose if the rate is having more numbers very very low very low okay up below average average above average sorry above average high very high and very very high suppose if the rate is like this more number of class variables are the class data are the then taking decision will be very difficult to hear okay this is the very important weakness of decision tree apart from this this model easily affected by underfitting or overfitting okay and the decision tree are prone to errors in classification problem okay easily affected by uh, errors while classifying the data uh, and if the training data is very small okay if less number of classes or many number of classes and very less number of training example then errors may occur here okay it require more training data and it can computationally very expensive to train the model right 
to training the decision tree model it is very expensive and for large trees the complexity is very much increased and it is very difficult to understand okay so these are the weakness of decision tree and next let us see the applications of decision tree the first one is business management when come to business management it is very much helpful that is the decision trees are very much helpful to extract the hidden information from the database that is here the database are very big from those very big database we need to extract the useful information only okay and the second one is customer relationship management this is also a part of business management here the decision trees are very much useful for understanding their customers needs and preferences accordingly they can provide the service to their customers right and third one is fraud and statement deduction here deduction of fraud and financial statement that is ffps here the decision tree is useful to discover the hidden information and the next one is engineering that is electrical and mechanical engineering the decision trees are widely used in energy consumption and fault diagnosis okay when come to energy consumption how much energy is consumed uh, by a particular individual or particular machinery will be easily identified by using decision tree and fault diagnosis Uh, here it is used to identify the faulty part of machinery or some tools of the machinery so by using decision tree we can easily detect those faulty part and the next board area is healthcare management here the decision tree is very much useful to discover or explore the hidden information of patient's illness whether the patient is affected by cancer or blood brain tumor etc okay for discovering all those things we can use the decision trees so far we have seen the decision tree algorithm from third unit supervised learning classification in this class we have seen the definition of decision tree building decision tree and example uh, for taking decisions that is car driving example and we have seen how to avoid the overfitting problem in decision tree by applying the pruning and the strength and weakness of decision tree and finally we have seen the applications of decision tree in the next class we will solve one problem by using the decision tree algorithm okay thank you